But love has found me In the nick of time Restored my shot of dreams And all the years that I have lost Hallelujah This is church This is church and Pastor John, I must appreciate what you are doing. The Lord will bless you. The Lord will bless you. Amen. You know what the Bible said? He said, whoever is faithful in handling another man's business, what happens to him? It's a sign of what lies ahead of you. And my prayer is that you will not fail. You will not fail. You will not fail. Some years ago, I was privileged to pastor the CEFN English Church. And several times, I had opportunity to join couples together. And the, then, then I had a pastor who was married, and his son was actually my classmate. And he would tell me, Pastor Jew, you are not supposed to join couples. I said, why? He said, because you are not married. And I said, Reverend Fathers, join couples together. And by statistics, Catholic homes are better rough than other homes. Among Christians, Catholics have more successful homes because they have plans on ground to help marriages stay. You don't marry until you have somebody they call sponsor. And anytime you have problem, you run to the person to help and all of that. They stand as your spiritual guards and all of that. I said Catholics are not married. And if you go to the Bible, two people talk more about marriage. And most of them are not married. Jesus and Paul. And after a long argument, they allowed me and I started joining couples together. But as a matter of fact, when I got married, I discovered that that man was right. There are so many things you will never know about marriage until you get into one. And most of the time, from your own point of view, you will always feel that your spouse is wrong. Because everybody will judge being on his own side. If I'm looking at you now, I look at you first of all from here. That is how things happen. But the day you start seeing with her own eyes or his own eyes, you discover you see something totally different. But God will help us in Jesus' name. Real uh, media crew, the Lord will bless you. Crystal media crew, God will bless you. It's wonderful. And for everybody that has ministered this morning, I see God in you. Yes. I see God in you. Our Father in heaven, this morning I ask that you will touch these lips of clay. Yes. Help me, Lord, to be a blessing to this one. None of me, but all of you. In Jesus' name. Amen. I started saying I will disappoint Pastor John this morning. Disappointing him in the sense that I'll be talking about relationship, but not the relationship he's expecting me to talk about. This is our month of relationship. We must understand that there are diverse forms of relationships. What we have been concentrating on basically is relationship as it has to do with the opposite sex. But I want to tell you that beyond that, there are several other relationships that are so very, very important, like the ones you've been talking about. I heard Pastor John talking about the fact that, you know, when he was talking about relationship, the first time I heard him talk about it, he talked about the fact that, you know, you relate to people who are ahead of you, those who are below you, and at the same time, there are people who you fall within the same level with and all of that. And these are also very, very important. Because there's no one who will leave this place and be alone. So I want to look at another dimension of relationship uh, today. And I believe that God will help us in Jesus' name. Now, I want to start by saying that the man or the woman that is seated by your right or your left matters to you. Every man God brings your way, it's there for a reason. But at the same time, it's not everyone that comes your way that is actually sent by God. They are facts we must understand. Everyone that God brings your way, it's there for a reason. Secondly, it's not everyone that comes your way that God brought. Thirdly, 
everyone that comes your way either adds to you or takes from you if everybody that comes to you add or takes that means we ought to be careful with people we meet and guess what some of us seated here today your greatness in life is tied to someone seated here i know people who wouldn't have amounted to anything if not for friendship Tell your neighbor, neighbor, neighbor. Don't, look don't look down on me. I matter to you. I matter to you. And, I and I know that you matter to me. Matter. Now look up. Do you know why I'm not afraid of what tomorrow will look like? How many of you know why I'm not afraid of what tomorrow will look like? Because I've got you. Even if all of you here decides to be wicked, if almost everybody here decides to be wicked, there will just be somebody who will be different. Yes. If there is always a Judah among every twelve, there is always a Peter among every twelve. Relationship. is a friend one of the definitions of friendship is someone you know too well that is not a member of your immediate family or member of your family and I like the word someone you know too well or know very well or someone you know well and when do you say I know this person very well now so many of us have been disappointed in the past there are people you think you know you never knew anything about them there are people who had lived with you for several years and they were living in, you know, they were carrying personalities and identity that are, that are not theirs. So one day you just said, this is what this person is, and you are disappointed. That's man. It should not be strange in the first place. But not minding what people can be, never you look down on what relationship can do to you. And that's why one of my prayers this morning is that God will give us the grace to be able to say, I am sorry, when we need to say, I am sorry. At the same time, God will give us the grace to stick to people we ought to stick to. I'm telling you the truth. I have seen people who are poor and are suffering, not because there are no doors open unto them. But they've handled the doors roughly in the past. So even though the doors are now important, they can't assess it. And you know what? An average man is a proud person. There are people you will meet today with your CV. Who will say, ah, you mean you've not gotten a job all this while? They will leave their office and then want something to happen to you. Some years ago, something happened, and let me recall it. A man was suffering in the city of Abuja looking for a job and he couldn't find one then he heard that what they call fema was giving out some little little contracts patching of roads clearing of grasses by the highway and all of that and he wanted this thing desperately he kept going for it and nobody wanted to give to him but one day he was in the city reading the newspaper and he saw the director of fema who happens to be his classmate in secondary school <laughs> the guy has not met this man he started smiling you know why he knew too well that this is my friend. May God place yourself, your friend somewhere. And at the same time, may God place you for someone. Guess what he did? This man carried his yearbook. Yearbook in secondary school. And he went to the director's office and said, I want to see the director. By his appearance, he was not good enough to see the director. Looking tattered. But he told the secretary, the man will want to see me. He will look at him, who are you that the director wants to see you? He said, tell him his classmate and friend in secondary school. It is one thing to be a classmate, it is another thing to be a friend. 
This guy saw the yearbook. And as God will have it, their pictures were closed. They were not only closed in class. That he now marked his own picture and marked the director's picture. And when the secretary saw the director, he started laughing. See your guy? And he carried the thing into the office. The man saw it and said, how did you get it? He said, this your friend is here. Let him come in. All the big, big people and contractors who were waiting couldn't see that man that day. This man sat with him for three hours. After talking, he said, let's go and have lunch. I don't need to tell you how the story ended. But sir, the contract, much more than he was demanding from, entered his hand. Not because of his qualification, but because of his friendship. If you go to ASO Savings today, you have students from Kogi State University more than any other university working in ASO Savings. And above all, 99% of them from Kogi State University working in ASO Savings, they are royalites. You know how God did it? First of all, God took a royalite there. When she got to that place, God favored her. Right now that I'm talking to you, she's the recruitment officer of ASO Savings. We have more than 15 royalites who have entered into ASO Savings. And some of them who are not even royalites, who, who got there, they got there because they had personal relationship with her here on campus. And one day I entered one of their branch, one of their branches, I entered one of them, and I had about seven persons running to come and greet me. How many? Seven. And when somebody walked up and said, Are you their pastor? I said, Yes, I am. He said, If you are their pastor, then you are a great man. I like that kind of comments. The compliment is a, a good one. But guess what? What if she never got there? And what if she got there? She's one, like one of us here. That is me, myself, and I. You will not even want some persons to come close to success. If she has some of the kind of attitude some of us have here, nobody would have gone there. At the same time, I'm happy to announce to you with regret that there are some realizers that are placed in heavy places who can help people right now and they are not doing anything about it. I confronted one of them some time ago. They pay coppers 90,000. You are the manager. No royal light have saved under you. What are you waiting for? And I, her explanation was the fact that some of these people who, would have, who she would have picked and everything, her friends, they are already employed. They are relationships that you should value more than the, even the personal contact. You know one thing I discovered? You know, recently I went to minister in a ministry, military environment. And so I was talking with someone and he was giving me examples of ex-boys. He said, if an ex-boy wants to talk to a general, he talks to a general as though they are colleagues with respect. The man telling me he's an army officer. But he says those of them who did not go through NMS and ND and all of that, that when they are talking to their superior, even if it is one rank ahead of you, they talk the way they talk with God to God. You are because he can do and undo. But you see, just one fresh NDA NMS boy who just come a captain talking to a major, and you are talking as though you you guys are mate. And he said, if you see a general who was an ex boy and he's in the office, and another ex-boy wants to see him. When he hears the name ex-boy, you say, let him come in. Do you know why? They've met somewhere. Not because they were in school at the same time, but there's something connecting them. Yes. An activity. Yes. Yes. If we joke with the relationships that God has given us, we might struggle in life. My struggle in life. Let me tell you, one of the greatest things that has happened to me in life is the fact that most of the things God has done in my life, He didn't do it through my family, He did it through my friends. Yes. And one day, God told me, He said, Do you know why I brought your father and so so and so person, Baba Taguba, together? I said, No. He said, It was because of you that I brought them together in 1947. 19 what? 47. And I said, How? He said, because you need them to get to where I am taking you to. 
And I looked at it. We are 18 from my father. And out of all the 18, I'm the only one connected to that family. And I said, this thing is through. They were not related as in blood relationship. They were related as friends. And after this man died, the friend now decided to pick his son and train him. The same person I'm talking about have brothers and cousins who are well to do. As a matter of fact, there are some prominent Igala people. If you call among five prominent Igala people, you will find one of them who should have done the same thing, but he didn't do it. There are things your brother will forget that your friend will not forget. As a matter of fact, let me tell you something. It will shock you to know that there are some of your brothers that don't want you to be better than them. I'm not even talking about stepbrothers. I'm talking about the same person you have the same mother and father for, with. They feel most of the comments, the uh, compliment that comes from your parents goes to you always. So, simply because of that, they develop some level of hatred for you. If they know they can help you to get to where God wants to get you to, they will withdraw it. How much more when you don't have the same mother and father? Those ones could be worse than even enemies. So, what are we saying? Have you ever asked, why did God bring this person my way? We will learn to appreciate them better and we will enjoy the benefit better. And guess what? There are some friends you have now. After you graduate from the university, you might never see them in life again. So if you are waiting to treat them well when you graduate, you are missing it. And there are some that even if they are in America and you are in Togo, or they are in Togo and you are in America because Let me give you an example of Blessing Drisu and what's uh, her name? Blessing's friend, Faith. Faith and Blessing were closest of friends in school here. Both of them were executives of Royal Campus Fellowship. I took House of Praise to my elder brother's wedding in Odu. And then a young man who came, who happens to be a friend to my elder brother's wife, Hosea's friend, saw Blessing and liked Blessing while Blessing was ministering. And at the end of the day, Dr. Che ended up becoming Blessing's husband. Dr. Oche's younger brother works with the state house. And when they came for Blessing's wedding, he saw Faith, who happens to be Blessing's friend. And today they are married. Now, listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. Now, there is no way or chess younger brother will want to marry Blessing's friend without asking Blessing questions. What if he asked, please, how much of Blessing do you know? Please, I want to know some things about her and all of that. And Blessing said, look, Blessing, Faith is my closest friend. But in case you are thinking about marriage, he's not somebody to even think about. That would have been the end of his intention. But because of the relationship that exists between them, by the time she had finished Painting the picture, the guy was in a hurry to marry. Now, that is how the relationship you have on campus you don't have value for. You don't know where it will take you to. First Samuel 18, verse First Samuel 18 and verse number. Can somebody help me read? And it came to pass. And when he had made an end of speaking unto Paul, Saul, and their soul was knitted together, and Jonathan loved him as his own soul. Now, that kind of relationship 
It's the kind of relationship that God expects between a man and a woman. That's why I said the two shall become one flesh and all of that. You know, the Bible says something that there's a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Proverbs 18, verse 24, I guess. Now look up. I don't know the day Jonathan and David met. I don't know what encouraged their relationship to get to that level. But I know that if for anything that relationship was what preserved the life of David. The innocent boy would have been killed by Saul. But several attempts this guy will open up to the young man. It was a kind of friendship that though his father was the king and was highly loved by his father he could not exchange it for the relationship he had with his friend David. It was that bad. And guess what? There are people you have around you that takes you that strong. And most of the time, we hold them unknown to us. There was a man that lived in this same town some years ago. He died some years ago too. He's a drunk. Everybody knows him. He wakes in, in the morning by 6 a.m. He's already at the beer parlor. I know that because we have a hotel in our house. So he, he's the one that wakes the boy that sells up. <laughs> he got to a point that these guys drank to the point that he couldn't eat the conventional food me and you eat. The highest he could eat in a day, maybe one, one slice of meat, pepper soup. And the rest was beer. Very, very neat man. When I say the man is neat, you can't catch him dirty. It's not possible. I've never seen it before. And he does not wash and iron his clothes himself. Dry cleaners will do every bit of it. This man one day was in the garage. And a young man was going to Kano to school. And he needed four naira for transport. All he needed was six naira, but he had two naira, and he had to go back to school. And those days, school is not like this. Most of your bills are actually paid for by the government and all of that. <laughs> so if you can get yourself to school, that's all you need to do and everything. And this guy was stranded in the garage and was crying. And he met the young man. What is your problem? He said he needs four naira to go back, get back to school and all of that. Four naira is... not. Don't see it as four naira. When I'm saying four naira at that time... If your transfer money to Kano could be four naira, you know it's something that has value. And this guy carried the four naira out of his pocket and gave it to the young man. That's how this guy got to school. As God would have it, this young man started growing. And it got to a point that he became prominent. But the story of the four naira till today has not left his heart. You know the young man I'm talking about? A lot of you who stays around here, or you are egalas, you've heard about positive. I'm talking about positive Ihabe. The present House of Rep member, the Kinabasa constituency, and all of that. This man, I'm telling you, though he drinks and he looks useless in the community and all of that, he has slept in most hotels, prominent hotels in this country. He has stayed in Nikon, he has stayed in Charlton, he has stayed in Bulling, any hotel you can think about. And sometimes he stays there a month or this. All his bills paid. The kind of clothes he wears, only few people can afford it in this town. Because of what? What he did to a friend. And that's why they said, a friend in need is a friend indeed. In the hostel, someone can't ask you for a cup of gari. You are not even ashamed that they call you that name. You don't know what you are missing. You don't know what? You don't know what you are missing. There's somebody that you can lay a helping hand. Give a helping hand now. It might be just 200 naira. In years to come, you will not be able to finish the 200. Yes, yes. Oh, yes. And when the guy died, you can't imagine the capacity and the level of people who came for his burial. Not because of his own personal relationship, but because of the friendship he has developed with the man over the years. He sits at table with them anywhere. But 
what he laid for a friend to him that four naira might be a sacrifice at that point but he did it for a friend you call them your friend what have you laid down for them a friend called jesus laid down his life for his friends is that deep so when we talk about friendship sometimes let's look beyond the name he's my friend he's my friend he's my friend he's my friend when that young man who you call your friend is stranded what happens basically before pastor john comes up to carry out the anointing whatever i want us to look at how to sustain friendship or relationship you know why we didn't need them look up i have a pastor friend of mine that when we were in bible school if you read his mission statement you will feel you are not called by god it's been 11 years now since we left bible school he's doing almost nothing and i am yet to find one of his friend who does not have problem with him the only friend in my life that i looked at his face face to face and told him that look enough of this friendship is the one and the same thing i did to him several other pastors have done it to him and if only you are right everybody is wrong something is wrong yes, 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 yes. there are people i know that he has as friends who would have helped him that can't help him because of his attitude proverbs 17 17 before i go to sustaining what do you call Proverbs 17 17 Somebody should just read fast A friend loved at all time And a brother is born for adversity Psalm 31 verse 11 a friend loved at all time all this seasonal relationship is not of god when the guy has money you are there when things are good for the guy you are there but when things turn around you turn around and guess what when you handle people when you do things to people they might never say it and you can't interpret what is in their heart it's even bad when they don't say it i've told us in church here about one chinese guy or so who was a house help to one white man and the white man will go when this guy pulls his slippers or whatever he'll carry nail and nail the slippers to the ground the guy will just wear slippers to move he, he will just be hooked he kept doing it and this guy never said a word he kept doing it he kept doing it and this guy never said a word so one day he now called the guy and apologized no more nails in the soup house. and the guy laughed he said no more saliva in the soup so anytime the guy nails his shoe to the ground the guy goes oh pour saliva into the soup and serve the man with it so and since this man didn't do anything he just felt this guy never did anything sir the fact that they are not reacting does not mean they are not doing anything there are some silent reaction that is worse than the normal one are you there psalm 31 verse 11 tell your neighbor no more saliva in the soup <laughs> tell your friend i mean it You can imagine this your friend has been pouring saliva in your soup <laughs> psalm 31 11. who is reading it for me now eh? now listen i was a reproach among my enemies can you imagine especially among my neighbors and what horror to even friends there is no time his friend sees him and stand 
may you not fall into evil if you are that kind of person. Amen. Now look up. The truth is this. There are some of us that have developed a very wrong nature of unfriend, friendlessness. You are not friendly at all. People have done everything to have you as a friend. It will not work. And sometimes you tell people, I don't make friends. You know what the Bible talks about? He that walks alone, he says, woe to him. Because the day he will fall, there will be nobody to help him. Whoever you are, not minding your background or your qualifications and all of that, you need a friend. But don't forget, an angel said, 1,000 good friends are not enough. But one bad one is too much. You need a friend. You need a friend. You have so many friends now. You still need more friends. Provided they are good. Because every good friend adds something to your life. And if you are a good friend, you should also add something to people's life. There are people I come around and my spirit is dead. There are pastors I come around I desire to do ministry. There are pastors I meet and the desire for ministry dies. There are people I meet and I just feel there's something in the inside. The kind of relationship that existed between Mary and the aunt or whatever, Elizabeth. Yes. Something in you should move. Yes. There's no time I have Bishop Obede around my house that something you does not... It, look, the desire to make more money. The desire to, 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 to talk to people. The desire to, 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 to feel who I am yes. works in me. Yes. You know why? He carries something that is needful in me. Yes. What do your friends do around you? A friend that does not inspire you. The Bible said the friend of the wise becomes wise. In other words, by association, there are some things that happen to you naturally. But the companion of fool shall be destroyed because that is where the foolish man will be. If what you have as a friend is a foolish person, you know your end. You don't need a prophet to tell you, my son, you'll be destroyed. No. <laughs> you don't need it. You don't need it. This is the sure more, the sure word of prophecy, more sure word of prophecy. Yes. The word of God. Yes. The word of God. Let's just run through it briefly. Seven st steps to maintaining good relationships. Seven steps. You need it in your business. You need it in your social life. You need it even in your religious life. The first step is this. Never criticize, complain, or condemn a friend. Now look up. If you call him your friend, if you call her your friend, do not criticize him. You know why? Let me tell you something. Even people that come with positive criticism, you have the tendency to see them as enemies. There are some persons that are doing it actually from the sincere, since they are, they, you know the depth of their heart, they are doing it sincerely. But when they do them, you no more see them as friend. Don't complain about them. Hey, I don't like the way this girl is in. Anytime, he's always asking me for bread. Always asking me for bread. Only... Be happy that you have bread to give. If there is any time you need to complain, complain when people come asking and you don't have to give. Have you ever asked, why did God give me the bread in the first place? You have to say, he that give it seed to the sower also gives bread to the eater so god makes some provision for you to give out and some for you to eat yes. when people keep coming to you is a sign that god is building you for something if the little you have now when people come you send them away there are some things god will never commit into your hands you have a friend you never said anything good about his strength all you emphasize is his weakness he's not your friend and I like Reverend Arame, I add that for something. He said, if, I, if you are my friend, I should be able to tell you your mouth is smelling. But there is a way he will say it that you are comfortable with it. 
If you go to Hebrews, Hebrew hotels in, in Sokoto and you enter the, the, the MD's office, there's an inscription that is on his table. There's a way you tell a man to go to hell and you look forward to the journey. You are asking him to go to hell, but yet he's excited about the journey. I told somebody, I said, I can sell shit. Because by the time I finish talking about it, ah, you want to buy. I can make you buy what you don't need. You are rude to everybody. And your prayer point is, God, bring my husband. You know how many times they came? The first time he met you, what you were saying from your mouth is not the kind of wife he's looking for. So, like Pastor Jonah said, it's not, there are some things the Holy Spirit cannot do. There is a place for prayer, there is a place for fasting, and there is a place for attitude. Me, you, God forbid, seeing nose, seeing leg, this, this. Mm -mm. And we are so designed that the tendency for you to identify with people who accepts you, who prays you, and everything is so high. Yes. It's our design. Yes. Yes. If it's your friend, don't criticize him. There's a way you can point out his weakness to him. And not when a guy is tensed. Somebody's just wanted to say some things now. You know, uh, you know, there was a story of this guy that wanted to ask a lady out. I went to the lady. He said, baby, can we have a dialogue way? <laughs> the lady said, no, it's not dialogue way. It's dialogue. He said, okay, it's a mistake of my tongue way. He said, no, it's not tongue way. Don't pronounce the U-E. The guy said, let us don't ag. <laughs> <laughs> let us know what? Ag. <laughs> you know what? That guy, they learn fast. The guy said, make you no pronounce the U-E. So he said, let us down and. In case you say argue, they'll say, don't pronounce the U-E. He said, I'm way. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, 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 look up, look up, look up. Look up. When people make mistakes, even if it is obvious, and you are interested in sustaining that relationship, overlook it. In his relaxed mood, Say, man, you know, you did well, today, but there's something you did. I, I, I said, when we come home, I will tell you. Man, the way you pronounce that thing is wrong. You, you are supposed to pronounce it this way. He said, are you serious? You mean that's what I said? And all of that, simple. As he's just coming down from the, with the microphone, he said, hey, you fire today. <laughs> and tomorrow you are expecting him to be relaxed with you. No. He will see you. Number two. You must accept him or accept her. See, learn to take people the way they are. Stop expecting everybody to be like you. And let me tell you one thing that will amaze you. There are some things you see people do and you just finish them and believe that there's nothing good that can come out of them. If you know what those people do to stop what you are saying, you will never say anything negative about them. There are people that have fasted and prayed and cried because of their attitude. And every now and then when they wake, that's the first thing they tell God about. And you, you come boldly to the public and all you do is to run them down. Eh? You see this one you want to give special number? Una no no am. But pastor, if that boy come again, no give him a special number. Huh? He's a, he's a cutest. He's this, he's this, he's that. And it's even worse. When you now tell them to their face, a man in Lagos one day called Olimde. He said, Olimde, you know, there's a way somebody will call you, you know, he's mocking you. He said, I heard you went to, to, to minister in one church. Was it in the world or in music? Olimide said, In the world. Word, word. Say, You're not even humble about it. Word. I can never allow you to preach on my altar. And the young man felt so bad. There is nobody that you will be little, even the humblest of all, that will not react. And this man is the only pastor of the church. He's the one that takes testimony. He's the one that collects offering. He's the one that counts offering. He's the one that does everything. And they are building a very big church 
One day they had finished the building of the church, they did the dedication of the auditorium. And as he was talking during the dedication, he said, Now that we have done this, I can now go and rest. As if it was a negative prophecy. He slumped. They were moving him around Nigeria, trying to look for uh, medications and all of that. By the time they took him to America, they said it was too late. And guess what? When the man slumped and he couldn't preach and he was running from one place to the other looking for solution, the same Olumide was the one that held the church. One day he called Olumide and said, how is the church doing? He said, sir, since you left, the church is doing perfectly. In fact, if you die now, this church will multiply. <laughs> Listen to me. You need people. You need people. And then I set people for their level. A guy is preaching now. You are saying the guy cannot preach. And if they give you mic, you can't even give testimony. I set them for what they are now. Everybody is growing. Everybody is growing. Give people a smile. Smile. You know, there are ways you show people you accept them. Somebody is coming to sing. And you are, you are looking at the guy. He knows that man, this guy is not happy that I'm here. Okay. He wants to say, Father, Father. <laughs> but if immediately the guy hand, hand just hold the mic, everybody is just smiling. He knows he's accepted. He will always want to be in this church because he knows this place. People accept him. There are some persons who can't go to other churches because the first time they went there, there was no acceptance. And Favor was telling me something in Lagos. He said, look, it won't cost us anything to do what Koza is doing. He said, the first time he went to Koza, he felt like going back again. Just go drop my Bible, go outside, so that when he's coming back, they'll welcome him again. Position some beautiful girl as though they brought them from another planet. Standing well-dressed. They are English as if they were taught what to say. You know, welcome, sit down, take water. One wife that knows I speak English. So anybody that just come, welcome, sit down, take water. That's what the English knows how to speak. Where is your husband? Welcome, sit down, take water. <laughs> Anything you say, you keep welcome, sit down, take water. That's what he has to say. As though he was zombie. But there is a way we can position people here. They are not just coming first of all because they want to hear Pastor John. But when they come the first day, a well-polished girl, God bless you, you are welcome. The smile is intimidating. He will tell the friend, see, we need to go to RICC. If, in fact, the way these girls, then when he comes and sits down, and Pastor John begins to minister, he will give his life to Christ. <laughs> Even if you are not there again, he will remain. You know why? He was accepted. And you need only one opportunity of making the first impression. There's nothing you tell somebody when he came here, first thing, you are directing to go to this interview. What's wrong with your head? He will tell you, I'm sorry with humility. He will just be praying for the service to end. Next time, go and bring him on Sunday. When somebody says, Let's go to RICC, he says, God forbid. Number three, approval. For example, a young man came here. When he was coming, you actually gave him a smile. He felt at home. He now sang a song and missed a line. It's already obvious on your face that, man, this is your song. You know, do. And one of the ways to approve people when they do things is praise them. Every man loves praise. It's not only Prince Abu Bakar. do. Every man loves praise. Hey, hey, Abu Bakar loves praise. Abu Bakar, don't you like praise? You know how I know whether I like praise or not? Let me just walk up to you now. Ah, faith. Your hair is beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> ah. But if I just... I said, now, which kind of hair is this? No, no, your face will just... <laughs> how many of you have watched Idols? That girl. Killing me so You know, when they're just telling her that this, you are this, you are that, and you're just smiling. But, immediately, they, everything just changed. That is, when there is approval, people smile. They are lifted in their spirit. They are in their best. When, when they see a sign of disapproval, you've lost them. There are people that can do anything to please you once they know you approve them. You 
can have a better worker in church when they know you approve them. When you praise them. And there's one magic word. Thank you. Thank you. Apart from approval, what other one is this? Appreciation. When you approve people, appreciate them. And there are several ways you can appreciate friends. There's nothing wrong with Pastor John coming one day and being led by God that men, this Sunday offering, there are some persons in church here that are so committed to us and I know that their finances are not too good. I'm packaging to 2,000 Naira. Nobody will arrest him. No church committee can do anything about it. People need to be appreciated. There are churches in Abuja that their keyboardists and instrumentalists have paid over 100,000 per month. And here we have people who are playing free. And one day he gave them 2,000. And you are dinting their car and say he gave the organist 2,000. And your face is doing like this. You are a witch. <laughs> Appreciate them. There is nothing even wrong. One day all of you will be coming to church. You will be surprised. Everybody will go home with egg roll and malt. I said, now how did this guy? He looks like magic. For even coming to church, you need to be appreciated. There are so many other students who are there in the hostel doing nothing. Number five. Five. I said appreciation. That's number four. Then admiration or admiration or whatever you call it. <laughs> you admire people. Admire them. You know, that's the problem that most of us, eager men, we have it. And my wife has a lot of problem with that. If I can work on this, she will love me the more. I'm telling you the truth. No, but it's funny. If I see... Um, what's your name again? <laughs> Emanuela, don't mind them. I thought they are calling you Alaye. <laughs> now, if I see Emanuela now and say, Kai, man, I love your top. It's good. You are looking neat. You are looking take away. There's just something. It's like an electric distance. 1,000 volt of electricity will just run through her spine. Oh, thank you. <laughs> She will look at herself as though she didn't look at the mirror when she left the house. Because she didn't know maybe when she was even leaving the house, she was not too comfortable with what she was putting on. And the same thing you are saying you are not comfortable with, somebody is admiring it. It triggers something in your inside. Man, I love your suit. I love your tie. You, you know, you, you are looking like, you know, by the time you equate them and then they see the picture of who you are talking about, say, wow. And guess what? Anybody you admire tends to admire you. Because this thing is reciprocal. Give and take. Give and take. Give and take. Give and take. I can easily tell another girl, you are looking very, very good. For me to tell my wife, it's like, one demon will come and hang here. You know it's looking good. You are saying it in your heart, but you can't open it up. But when you see others, you can easily say it. It's the devil. It's the devil. It's the devil. Now listen to me. Everybody needs self-esteem. And there's nothing that boosts self-esteem like admi admiring people. Say, man, you are gorgeous. You are good. Man, your tie, everything is just blending. Kai, no, 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 no. You look take away. And ladies like hearing it. Really? <laughs> Number six. I call it agreeability. Yes, sir. The ability to agree with your friend. Can two work together except they be agreed? If you're actually building that relationship, learn to agree with your friend. You don't have to keep arguing every now and then. Sometimes what they're saying might be wrong. Agree foolishly. Why you, you are doing this just to build the relationship? You know, Pastor Joshua told me one thing one day and I laughed, I couldn't laugh. He said he was just walking close to his house in Kaduna and he saw a boy and a girl, they were talking. They sat on somebody uh, suck away or something like that. And the girl was just telling me, he said, look, see, all these years you have been lying to me. I knew I didn't want to say anything about it. Hey, Pastor Joshua said, as if the ground should open for him to enter inside. I said, I wonder what the guy will feel. All the time you have been bobbing the girl, he just kept quiet as if foolishly he followed you. He said, I just, I just, I just behave as if I'm not aware because I love you. If not, all the lie, I know saying a lie. 
<laughs> now listen to me if she had reacted the relationship would have broken before that time the reason some of you cannot hold relationship is because you find fault easily there's a way you can teach people to tell the truth when you tell them things the way it is they will learn that look oh, this girl tells me the truth all the time why should i keep lying one time before you know they start feeling guilty for lying to you because why you have been sowing the seed of the truth and guess what the bible said it will set you free agree agree with people don't always be right everything every other person is saying I, he said, you know, Baba told me that when he was in primary school, they had the white man teaching them. The man said, he who knows not and knows not that he knows not is a fool. <laughs> Even when you are wrong and the thing is taking it, you still, yeah, I'm right, I'm right. No. Mellow down some time. So learn to agree. If he's your friend, learn to agree with him. And when somebody sees that even when he's wrong, you agree with him. When you are wrong, he agrees with you. I know a family that is like that. If one person is wrong, all of them will support the person before they go back to the house and iron it out. Bro, that's what you do. They're wrong. Bro. But I know if you did, they tell you, say, now nah, you're wrong. Next time, no do harm like this. When people know you do that to them, they will be loyal to you all the days of their life. But when people do that, uh, say, no, I, I don't agree. You are even use the word, I don't agree with you. No, this he is in the light. He, he won't see you like a friend. Finally, focus attention. Focused attention. Now listen to me. Women love and respect this more. When a woman is talking to you and you behave as you are though you are thinking of another thing, you have bought trouble. You don't buy trouble. And apart from women, every human being is like that. People love to be listened to. Yes. 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 And in the relationship you are building, the reason why you'll be so deep in somebody's heart is because he just believes you are the kind of person. I respect people who listen to me. Because everybody has something to say. Yes. There's something in your inside that you just feel you should say it. And there are people you tell them and they take their time to hear every bit of it. And when they are talking back to you, you know that everything you said, they heard it. Yes. There's nothing that gives people joy like that. But somebody's talking to you. I think, going up to the high places. I'm talking to you now. I'm hearing you. You are hearing me and you are singing. Yes. Yes. And most of the times, women will just walk out of you there. Some of them who know how to cry very well. He doesn't even, <laughs> he doesn't even have my time. <laughs> and guess what? From what we watched here, do you know why the devil was able to prevail? The man was not around. And woman always needs companionship. So the devil offered, God bless you. The devil offered what the woman wanted. The first thing the devil gave was his time before the instruction. <laughs> if you don't listen to your friends, there's someone who wants to listen to them. And before you know, the person's heart will begin to go after the one that listens to him. Watch it. You complain you are in a relationship. And this lady keeps... He's always interested in being around another person. You know why? As far as he's concerned, this guy is not boring. He always has something to say, or he always listening to me. When he's talking, you, you are talking. But there's somewhere when she's talking, she's always in, in charge. Yes. Women love it. Yes. And guess what? Men love it too. That's why I hear some guys complaining. You know they hear. <laughs> I don't mind her. She's stubborn. When I'm talking, she's talking. mm, -mm. How many times have you taken your time to hear someone out? Everybody wants to be heard. But nobody wants to hear. Get set. Because the man, the woman seated by your side, you don't know what he will become. 
a man who never dreamt of becoming a commissioner of his state became two-time minister of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. You know why? He was privileged to work in the prison where Obasanjo was kept. And though Obasanjo was a prisoner, he did not treat him like one. He treated him like a president. When Obasanjo got out, he did not forget him. A lot of us, we, we don't have foresight. When you see a girl now, or you see a boy now, you see him with the eye of a 200 level student. You are missing it. Yes. See the banker in her. Yes. See the manager in her. Yes. See the entrepreneur in her. Yes. See, see the chief accountant in her. See, see, see what they will be, not what they are. Yes. And when you start seeing people with what they are in the eyes of God, you've got it. Yes, yes, yes. You know why I can't look down on you? You know why I can't look down on you? Maybe you are the one that is going to sign the greatest contract I will ever handle in life. You know why I can't look down on you? Now listen, let me end here. Last Sunday I was not in church here. I was in Lagos preaching. And when I, when I was through, it was an exciting service. Great service, great service. I met people that matter. When I was through with it, I came back to where I was lodged. And I started thinking about something. I said, what if Pastor Favor never got to that place? What on earth would have brought me there? I got there because before I discovered that there were three royal lights there. If I look down on you today, there are places I might not get to tomorrow. Every one of you here matter. You matter to me, you matter to him, and he matters to you. One day somebody called me, and you know women. Not even the person called me, I called the person. And then I was talking like about two to three minutes, and they were just talking like that, and I was so excited and all of that. And my wife looked at me and said, who is that? I said, one of my daughters. And she graduated, she's in Abuja and all of that. And then he said, hey, I am wasting all that credit. I said, it's not a waste. Point of correction, it's not a waste. A week later, the same person he felt I was spending less than 60 naira on sent 100,000 to me. And when the money came, <laughs> hey, he who laughs last. I said, woman, the person I was wasting credit on some days ago just sent a hundred thousand to me. <laughs> and immediately her countenance changed. You know why? They were <laughs> stand on your feet. Glory to God. Stand on your feet. Stand on your feet. I want to pray one prayer. Lord. Say it after me, Lord. Every man, every woman that matters to my life, that matters to my destiny, Lord, bring them my way and help me to maintain and keep them in the name of Jesus. Lord, every man, every woman that you bring my way, help me to understand the reason why you have sent them. So that I will not miss it. So that I will not lose it.